and good evening good evening and welcome to the soul citizens i am griffin gaming rpg and i am back not just me but i'm back with my buddy Tenth hey, Sigma. Hey. what's up That's my brother it. um okay man just doing the deal happy it's friday how you doing griff all right i had to adjust your camera a little bit because i had you smaller than me and i can't have you smaller than me i gotta have you <laughs> at the right height so uh I no did. man it's, it's good to see you um Man, let me ask you, man. I know you told me you haven't had a chance to dive into 313 yet. Did that uh, video give you any inspiration? They, CIG cut hey. a new video called um, uh, What is Star Citizen? This is kind of like an updated version of that. Uh, what, did, what did you think at these saw? I think it was pretty cool, man. You know what, what was really awesome? It was to see the uh, some of the community, the community footage. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Uh, there was some uh, stuff by, I think, Board Gamer's name flashed down there. A couple of the names that I like saw just briefly. But it was uh it was really cool. DK man, what's going on? Origin yeah. for life, yes sir. Yes. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> yeah, fast card. Um, but yeah, was... hold up, fast card. I know we have guests yeah. in the waiting room. There, that's why they're in the waiting room. <laughs> I'm gonna get to them. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk to Tenth yet. I see all three of them. They've been in there already for a while. So I'm gonna get to them. I'm gonna get to them. We're all right, go ahead, go ahead, happen. Tenth. I'm sorry. What were you saying? But no, I, I loved it. I thought it was uh. There's a lot of stuff at play there. There was the new um. Well, since I had, I had been in there, mm -hmm. um, being able to, the, the, the fighting, uh, hand to hand combat, um, grenades, um, being able to like toss them the different ways they talked about before. Mm -hmm. Um, and just some of the, the, the cuts of the RP, the, excuse me, the, um, the FPS action, yeah. Yeah. um, and you know, the kind of the, the vehicles, mm -hmm. it was pretty cool to see. I, I, I could tell that if I wasn't, I, I got for just a, a moment, Griff. If I wasn't in the Star Citizen universe, I almost felt as uh, when I saw the the first promos back in uh, uh, 2014. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I felt, it felt cool. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, you know, what I think is also cool too is that these presentations now are not just concept anymore, but they are in-game. You know what I mean? You yeah. can actually play them, you can do them, and we can feel a little bit more confident when we invite people into the game by showing them a, 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 you know, a video like that. Because I think some yeah. of the earlier videos, unless you were really into it, it was very easy to kind of not really get the whole concept of what Star Citizen was about. But now we're kind of seeing it fill out even more. That's so it. that that was really yeah. cool. Uh, it's nice to see that they did an updated video. We're gonna and, and the reason why I'm, I'm kind of spending a little time with Tenth here is because and I'm about to let our guests in in a second. Um, is because we've been talking about 313 for the past uh, what going on three weeks now. And normally, as you guys mm -hmm. know, we're actually in the next quarter for when CIG would be working on the next update, which would be 3.14. So we're actually almost a month in. Uh, we just got it yesterday. And so some of us have been in PTU for a couple of weeks. Uh, it was in there for a good little time. I think they went all the way up to update P, I think, Q or P. Oh, so wow. they did a lot of updates on this that's one. That's crazy. Uh, there's still some stuff to fix. We get that, but that's always the case. But it definitely had a lot of improvements in it. So we're gonna bring our guests in because uh, I didn't want to talk about that per se. I do want to talk about a couple of things they decided to highlight though, Tim. There were two videos that they put out along with mm -hmm. that video for the release of 313. And there's also some, some stuff they came up with in the sense of sales, uh, some items for sales, some armor, okay. some things, and vehicles. So we're yeah. going to bring the guests in. Let's take a look at those Let's videos and then we'll kind of get their feedback on that too. So um, this week we've got some of our, our regular guests that have always dropped in on us. We've got Admiral Kusanagi joining us. Yeah. I, I popped myself out of my own channel. That's kind of crazy. We've got Admiral Kusanagi Hello. joining us, Fist of Faces joining us, and Pops in Spaces joining us. How you guys doing? Hey, hey. Thank you. Good, good. It's good to have you guys. We appreciate you guys as always. Uh, Jazzy, let me stop for one second and say, Jazzy, thank you for what you did earlier. Uh, you know, I, and, and I know there are plenty of you all who promote us and tell people about us. Uh, but right when I was pushing out a tweet for the show, Jazzy pushed out one that said, support soul citizens. And he sent the folks uh, to nice. our Patreon. <laughs> so we nice, don't ever really talk nice. about our Patreon very often, but we do have a Patreon uh, where any monies that come in from that Patreon and also from the sus subscriptions you guys do and donations you guys do on Twitch, we take all of that and turn it right back around and put it right back into the community. Um, and so that's something that we're always excited to do. So Jazzy, thank you for that. Uh, even, and I saw you did it from an Xbox. So that's even cooler than, than anything else. So I appreciate that. Uh, Very so cool. let's go ahead and jump in and talk to our guys, uh, our guests here. They all say they're doing good. And I know they're ready to talk about a little bit of 313, 
Um, let, let me just get a quick survey from everybody. Admiral, have you been in it since it went live? Uh, I tried last night. I couldn't get through the gender screen. Mm. Wow. Uh, I, I, down, I deleted the user folder. Mm. Um, so I was, uh, I'll probably try again tomorrow mm. and uh, see where I see where it takes me. Okay. Gotcha. Fist, what about you? Yes. Ooh, your audio is freaky, freaky, freaky. You might have to do a reset on Discord and come back in. You got nothing but uh, static. Let me jump to Pops while you're checking that out. Pops, are you, how are you? Are you, can you? Oh, Pops is with you. Let me see. Pops, are you yeah. on a different one? No, I'm, I'm on. Oh, you're clear. Um, okay, yeah, you're clear. Yeah. yeah, how about you? Have you had a chance to get into it and went live? Yeah, we went in. And uh, let's see. We went to do... But we were trying to do some mining. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't quite make it. Okay. Uh, mm. <laughs> because my character got stuck in that mood <laughs> um, in the seat and okay. couldn't get out, couldn't do anything. Be, be, be real specific. Got, how, which seat were you in? What were you in when you got stuck? Uh, Mer Mercury Star Runner, passenger. Passenger died. seat. Okay. Passenger issue. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's been the passenger yeah, seat's been a monster for several ships for some time. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I know the in the uh, Cutlass Black, the, well, any of the Cutlasses, the secondary seat was always suicidal to get in. A ship would freak out or something would lock up yep. or something. Yep, yep. So evidently that's still some type of issue that comes up from time to time. Uh, tenth, that usually will go away just so you'll know. I think that's usually the internet connection. So it, hopefully it'll clear sure, up in okay. a second, okay? Uh, yep. Okay, listen, guys, we want to get you guys feedback on the other two videos that we've got coming up. And I know uh, Fist, we're going to get him back in a second. Looks like he probably is just resetting his computer because he's not back in Discord. Um, listen, for those of you who are first time to the show, uh, this is our community talk show. Uh, this is a show where we invite you, the community, to come onto the show and talk with us and share your thoughts and feelings about Star Citizen, whatever's going on that week. Uh, we've got some cool stuff to look at today. We've got another piece of Elite Dangerous that I really can't wait to hear from the, our guests about because yeah. uh, I really want to hear, and even you, Tim, because I think this is going to freak you out when you see it too. Uh, I really and I used to play ED for a little bit, so really? I'm, I'm kind of well, maybe, yeah, maybe this, in the, in maybe the this is going to bring you back. I don't know. Yeah, Hang okay. On a yeah, you I'm know what? Excited. Something happened with your video. That is not the thing now. Did something change on your okay. end? Um, camera wise. Still there you go. Here. There you go. There you go. Whatever okay. you did is it. Yep, that was it. Thank okay. you. Okay, beautiful. You're right, looking. Great. You're looking handsome as always. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, Fist. <laughs> uh, what about you? You're going to tell us. Have you been in three thirteen since it went live? Pop says you guys did get a chance to dive in. Make sure the microphone's good. You make okay. the microphone's good. All right. Cool. Yes, we uh we actually <laughs> was in there this morning. Okay. I think. Yeah. This morning afternoon. Yeah. We um we did uh what was it uh a little mission with a couple of guys in the org. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was a bunker mission. Tried it out. Mm -hmm. It was uh, pretty good. Um, just mind you guys, um, new Babbage. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't go there. If, if you're trying to get to the commons, you're going to have to go through the back way. Mm -hmm. The train was not letting anybody off except for oh, no. the terminal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if that was that particular server, mm -hmm. but I know there was that issue. We did have that in... Um, on the PTU as well, so mm. it could be okay. You know, still the same. You know, okay, okay, gotcha. But just to let you, everybody just know. morning, huh? Safety tip of the day. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Jazzy, thank you for that host. Appreciate that. Thanks for getting our our name out there. Uh, by the way, before I go any further, I didn't mention this. I know we did a post on it on Twitter the other day, but if I'm not mistaken, it was yesterday. Tenth. Guess what yesterday was. Uh, trust Thursday. me, you have no idea. Yeah, trust me, you have no idea. <laughs> a year ago, a year ago yesterday, we hit yeah. 100 subscribers on Twitch. People uh, who follow us, people followers, I should say, followers on Twitch. We hit 100 followers on yeah. Twitch a year ago, yeah, yesterday. That's awesome. And guess how many we have now? So much to the tune of uh, nine. Good. 80. Ooh. Ooh. Was that no? Come I was on, did you? Just oh, okay. I saw All right. You saw yeah. it. Okay, like yeah, that. yeah. So yeah, we're at. Well, my number says nine seventy nine. But but my point is yeah. that we're getting closer and closer to that thousand mark, and I think we're yes, going to get are. there maybe within the next couple of weeks. So for those of you who aren't following us, if you if you aren't following us, if you enjoy what you see, we want to encourage you guys to follow us, and of course we want to encourage you guys to come into the room. Uh, we've got room for maybe one more person. So Matt Style, good to see you. We got room for one more person. So if somebody else wants to join us for the conversation, you can. Uh, let's get to these videos because I really want to hear what our, our good friends have to say about these. Okay. Um, the first one that we've got 
is uh no you know what let's do the odyssey first before we okay. do star system we want to get rid of i shouldn't say get rid of we want to watch odyssey first and elite before we get into star <laughs> citizen i won't say get rid of so let's take a quick look at this and and i want you guys to give me your thoughts now they're in a, what they call phase three and they've been doing these dev diaries uh each week every few days and in this particular dev diary uh, they decide to leave the station because they want to talk about scale of the ships. And we've seen some of the ships so far where they've gone into the hangar. But on this particular occasion, you can tell they really want to pump up the whole size and scale thing. So they decide to go take a look at a Corvette. And I want to get your feelings about this. Okay, so let's, right. let's change up our screen. Go to the right screen. I don't know why are my buttons working right? There we go. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. Long live Chuck cool. Hangun. So what's the did that? I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a bit of a play around and, and see what ships I can get. So I obviously got the Challenger so we could do some 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 co-op shenanigans. Uh, I also only gave myself a Corvette because I wanted to see how big it is. Chat, do you want to see how big a Corvette is? Oh, and you've um, got to show. Uh, yeah, do you, you want to see it. how big a Corvette is in a hangar? Let's go. Okay. Sally wants to, Sally wants to go, so we're going to go. So there we go. Let's if you don't want to see how big go. a Corvette looks in a hangar, look away. Um, but... I put one in a hangar because I was I was super curious. There it is, Federal Corvette. It's big. I'm not gonna lie, chat. This thing is mahusi. Okay, I gotta interject here. <laughs> Nordic American, thank you so much for the six month subscription from Prime. Thank you, Nordic, and good to see you tonight. I'm glad to have you with us tonight. I should say. Uh, let me let me throw something at you. Colossal was the one who shared this with me. I think it was Colossal, or where we was dig that. You saw them get in the elevator. Did you notice they got in separate elevators? Did you guys notice uh -huh. that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. You can't put multiple people in elevators. Wow. Because those okay. those elevators are actually load screens, I think. So they're not physical. Like in Star Citizen, the elevators are actually physical elevators, and and that is not the case here. So yeah. Oh, okay. I, and I'm not throwing any rocks. I'm just saying. Did you notice that they it's split up? Breaking. They split up, right? But they, when they split up, they went to two different elevators. Go, but, but you know yeah. to go down. Okay. So let's just want to point that out. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to see it, look away. Spoilers! Yeah, I will, I will shout back when I'm not around the Corvette, <laughs> alright? So no spoilers here. Alright, so you've all looked away? You've all looked away? Good, I hope so. <laughs> here we go. This is a Corvette. And this is still the Corvette coming to view. It's still coming to view. This thing is big. It is a unit, as the youth of today would say. Big lad. This is a chonky, chonky boy. <laughs> Look at those engines. Uh, everyone's like, wow. Yeah, a this ship. is a big... I'm sprinting now, Damn. and I'm running. I'm still running here. Do you know it reminds me of the start of Star Wars? Look That's at this baby. <laughs> I'm still sprinting. I'm still <laughs> anywhere near the end oh my God. Um, of this ship. Yeah. She big. She's a lot of people are excited on YouTube big. right now. Nice. Look wow. at this. The running lights going. <laughs> super big. Super, super, super big. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to external camera to give you an idea of scale. Awesome. Uh, there we go. So there's me. There's Chuck Handgun. Looks especially like Chuck uh, uh, Buck Laser Beam. And <laughs> this is how big I am in comparison to the Corvette. And we're still panning out. <laughs> and we're still panning out. It's glorious. <laughs> she is a beaut. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to our guests. First, Admiral Kusanagi, first man here. What are your thoughts about the, the Corvette and Elite, the scale? Um... I think it looks pretty good, I guess. I mean, certainly for Elite, um, it's a, a huge, huge change. Um, and I'm just trying to compare that to the Idris that I walked underneath before back in the day uh, when it was at one of the trade shows. And then, like, how I'm kind of contemplating, you know, the Polaris to be and, and how they're going to get the Perseus kind of in that mix. Mm. Um so it's a little difficult. I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, I'm thinking like maybe they get us make the interest a little bit bigger. I mean, I, it's kind of funny that way. <laughs> okay. Fist, what about you? Um, I'm going to have to ask you guys. Uh, well, I think no matter Dark Knight actually said it. Um, mm -hmm. you got, you can't walk around in the ships though. 
So I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, in that. yeah. There's, in fact, on a couple of their dev diaries, I've been listening yeah. to a couple of other people who who do stuff for Elite, and there's been this outcry to a certain degree from their community that they want yeah. them to work on being able to have interiors. I mean, right now it is a big ship, but it's a big empty it's ship. It's a big ship, it, right? It, I'm like, and, and, wow, what is this? What is this for for, for me for for single person for me to be in such a big thing like this, and I can't. Right, you know, it's just yeah. Well, and, and to Dark Knight's point, that's why he was talking about their engine. And see, this right. this becomes the trade off again that we've always talked about with Elite and Star Citizen. And I'm, believe me, I'm mm -hmm. not trying to be this super Star Citizen is so much better than Elite person. I'm not. Right. There, there, there were two different design decisions on how they were going to do these games. One of them was the design decision that um, Frontier decided to do that they were going to put the game out, make it playable and then build over time toward its goals of things that they okay. wanted to achieve. Being able to be, get in and out of a ship was something that was always, or being outside a ship was always in their game plan, but it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't in the beginning, right? Star Citizen, okay. on the other hand, decided not to make the game fully playable, but to work on those elements so that they could do certain things. And so, right. because it's not playable, there are people who look at Star Citizen and say, well, it's been eight years and blah, 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 and this much hasn't happened, right? But then there are people who mm -hmm. play uh, Elite Dangerous who say, yeah, well, it's been eight years and we still can't do such and such. You know what I mean? So both right. sides no, have that argument yeah. on both sides yeah, because think, developing yeah. a game is no small task, especially when you're developing a game. Both games are ambitious. Both of them are very Before different. Before you go to Pops, mm -hmm. Before you go to Pops can yeah. I ask a question sure. real quick? Okay, so for with, with this whole video, from what I've seen, it looks like the both of them are getting ready to go down to the ship. So mm -hmm. I would like to know, is there, maybe DK can help me out in, in, in this question, is there multi-crew in this though, at least? Mm -hmm. I mean, you may not be able to walk around, mm -hmm. but cause like, I'm, I'm seeing this is such a big ship. It's gotta be multi-crew, yeah, right? DK can, no. a, DK, can a person fly with you in that other seat now? Or is it, there is to a point. Is it that the person can okay. fly in the passenger seat? Cause I know the passenger seat's available, right? Or is, or is it not available? Mm -hmm. DK, do me a favor. Jump, jump in the Discord if you can. It'll make it. That'll make it a little bit easier. You can answer the questions faster that way. He's gonna. He'll. He'll pop into into Discord with us. Well, Chris, I have a question for you now. Yeah, yeah, Admiral, go ahead. So, can can the person can if if since they're they're sharing elevators, can that same elevator? Can those both of those elevators go in the same hangar? That that's what again. I, that's why I want DK to hop in. Oh. yeah, Dark Knight. Because I haven't done the alpha. Okay, maybe he's not able. Are you able to jump in Dark Knight or no? I think he said cool. Well, I know he said cool, but so, I, don't, I don't know yeah. if he's able to. Get I guess we can go to. Oh, there he goes. Okay. There he is. Yeah, hey, buddy. Hey, Dark. Okay, let me pause the uh, <laughs> the uh, chat there because it was up uh, a little oh, okay. bit loud. Okay, yeah, maybe you can answer those questions about the uh, yeah. multi crew and moving about. We'll go ahead. Yeah. So multi-crew is, it's like an instance, uh, instance setup. Um, you can multi-crew with members of your squadron. Oh, no, not, not your squadron, your okay. wing. Okay. And they can join you in the ship. Now, the previous way that it was done without the uh, FPS, without being able to walk, was you would load into the ship as what they call, quote-unquote, a telepresence. So basically, you are kind of teleporting to a seat, but you're not really there. Um, and when you leave the ship, you go back to your own ship. In this, as, uh, in this instance, they are giving you the opportunity to, to get onto a ship with your mates, but I believe you have to be in a wing, and the number of seats in the ship depends on how many can actually board. So the lowest, obviously, being a single-seater, then you've got a lot of dual seats. And there are a few that have three uh, seats, usually your Corvettes, your Cutters, and your Anacondas. Okay. So if I'm in the, if I'm in the ship, if I, if I go in with you, and I know how you board the ship, am I, I'm, 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 I'm I physically in the ship with you and I can look over and see you? Or is it, because you said a telepresence, and I don't know if that, if that mm -hmm. are you saying like they're physically there? Or are you saying they're holographically there? What does that mean by telepresence? In Odyssey, you would be physically in the ship. Okay, physically. And okay. Then you can exit the ship just like, uh, just like the, the star the, system. But okay. the, um, but in the old version, the current version right now, that's mm -hmm. not Odyssey and Horizons. You are telepresence, so you basically just log in and 
and join their wing, and then you end up in their co-pilot seat, basically. Okay. okay. Um, for lack of a better, better, you know, way to put it, is it it really was not multi-crew. It was just you and a ship with somebody else. With somebody. I think we're getting closer to multi-crew. Right now, she was with him at first. I thought they were both coming down the elevator down there. Let's if if those even though they take separate elevators, they'll both come out in that hangar. Is that right? Right. Okay. Right. And, and they should both be able to load uh, load onto the ship. I don't know if it's simultaneously or separately. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't tried it out yet. Okay. Does the owner automatically move into the pilot position, or can that be designated when you're in that squad as to who actually gets to fly the ship? No, the owner only be is able to fly the ship. Okay. And your partner only ends up in a cockpit. Okay. Yeah, but where is she? Where is she in this in this video? She. I don't think she's both, in there. They both entered. Yeah, they both the got on an elevator at the same time. Well, they got on two different right. elevators, but she didn't pop up here. That's that's why I was asking about was she coming down there with him because I didn't see her. I kind of feel like she went to her own. Oh, maybe. Corvette. Oh, yeah, maybe it's she went to her own. Show. I'm not sure if they even tried to do multi crew on this one. I have to watch it again. Okay. Um. But I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Okay. Okay. Right mm. Very cool. All right. It, oh, fast card says that she's controlling the camera. No, he's controlling it's, his own camera. Yeah, he's controlling. You the can camera. zoom out pretty far in Elite with the camera controls um, to that yep. level. Okay. Very cool. Thanks, Dark Knight. Did you guys have any other questions yeah, for him yeah. before he ducks out? Yeah. Um. I hey, Bob, go yeah. Go ahead. Um, what is what is the price tag on this thing? Ooh, Lord. Oh. <laughs> for the uh, for the Odyssey update. No, 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 no. He's talking for the ship. No, for that, that ship. The Corvette. Oh, for the ship. Yeah. Uh, what is it? 120,000? Or no, 120 mm -hmm. million? Million. Uh, mm -hmm, I'm probably. talking real money. Uh, yeah, what does it cost? Oh, no. It is, it is, Elite doesn't no, translate that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything yeah. is all in game. Elite, okay, does, yeah, Elite doesn't translate yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything's in game. You can buy, okay. you know, uh, you know, skins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, 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 everything else is in game. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have, you have to work to get to this. To that. Yeah. You have to work for it. And in, and in the case of the Corvette, you actually have to achieve a rank within a uh, within the Federation mm -hmm. in order to actually get the ship, and that takes a lot of work in order to achieve that rank. So not only do you have to work hard to get the money, then you got to work hard for the Federation to get the rank in order to buy the ship. <laughs> Colossus said you broke after that purchase. <laughs> you are broke. <laughs> 187 yeah. million credits is how much it costs. How much? Wow. 187 million credits, and that's base. Yeah. If Can you I, you have to start tricking to it out. Max, yeah. Billion credits. Yeah, when you start okay. tricking it out, it gets expensive. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if you asked this. I don't know if you asked this question earlier, Griff. Cause I got a little distracted. Mm -hmm. I'll handle something. But um, if I want, I don't know if you um, if you answer this for me, though, DK. What is this ship's purpose? Uh, that ship is built basically as a military vessel, and it's okay. it, and it's uh, and it, and it's uh, gunned to be a fast pursuit uh, corvette. So it's uh, it, it goes after the larger ships. Um, anywhere from large, medium on up to the large ships. Uh, it is tanked with, I think, nine massive guns on it. I mean, it's it's huge. And you it's have, a, and, and the pilot has control all of all all yeah. of those guns. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yep. Yep. you control okay. everything on it. Yeah. Oh, you control all the guns. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh. it's a yeah. one man. Oh yeah, all the ships uh, are one man in the sense of like the capabilities of firing and things of that nature. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't multi-crew for mm -hmm. these large ships. That's another big difference between Star Citizen and Elite. Right. Is large mm -hmm. ships, you are the single pilot and all of these ships are single piloted. Mm -hmm. And you have control oh, of all of them. So when mm -hmm. you have two other people, as you said, maybe two other people on your ship, what do they do? Go for the ride? They would be <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also control power and shields yeah. and uh and, oh, and okay. uh, change out um uh okay. different loadouts and things like that. Yeah, they mm -hmm. have that ability. Okay, okay we're last one though for me. Okay, so if you blow up, right, or if you, you know, blow up in this ship or you whatever in a fight, do you get a crime stat 
if you're uh, the pilot for, for killing no, the other no, two no, people. No, 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 no. Elite, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I got to make this really clear. Elite is an entirely different game. Yeah, entirely okay. different game. The, the game mechanics are so different, which is good. I mean, in the sense of that, you know, you don't have something that's identical. We may see things that visually right. resonate with us, but the gameplay and everything is an entirely different okay. thing. So, yeah, it's a yeah. good looking ship. Uh, mm -hmm. I like it's that. a good looking ship. Yep. But to answer nice. you know, the uh, is uh, if you do blow up in that ship, you have to mm -hmm. replace it all over, and you got to replace it with all the parts. Yes, sir. And that one hundred eighty-seven million credits yes, sir. is about how much it's going to cost you to replace that ship. Well, it will Ooh. sit right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, reputation. All that hard work. Re it will sit right there. Colossal's just, just mentioning. Yeah, Colossal yeah, Smith thinks something so that is important where he talks about that in Elite. This is something that yeah, they have okay. had in the game is reputation. Because the yes. different organizations and systems you have relate to, you basically can, you know, be in, a good, in good or in okay. bad with folk. And, and also you get access to things because of that where Star Citizen is just now implementing right. reputations. So this is, again, when I talk about how one took one path to develop their game and the other one mm -hmm. took a different yeah. path to develop the game. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. That's cool, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, DK, thank you, man. We appreciate you stopping yeah, and yeah. helping us out with yeah. that. Okay. I'll check out of here. Let y'all continue. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he keeps the light on for right. Elite Dangerous so that we don't get too salty about Elite. So we appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> no, no, seriously. I mean, it's good. I mean, Colossal plays it. I I love Elite, and I, I just I'm, I'm waiting for him to get past this alpha, and I'm probably going to jump back into it. But for right now, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to pay for the alpha access right now. I'll wait till it comes out and then I'll probably jump in and give it a, give it a try. 10th. Did you ever monkey yeah, around with elite dangerous for a little bit? So I was back there, uh, when it first came out. Okay. Um, and I primarily did hauling. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, uh, I didn't stick with it. I didn't mm -hmm. stick with it. So I was, uh, yeah, I, I was I was interested. Okay. Uh, were you playing with the, people with or by the, yourself? By yourself, or were you playing with other folks? Just by myself. Yeah, see, that's yeah, what burns you out. Solo yeah, that burns you out solo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that I, was my I problem. didn't find a group. Mm -hmm. I was in a yeah, small was group so... of like eight people, and it and it and once I didn't play with them anymore, it just it just went for me. You know, it was just difficult yeah. to keep going back to it. Yeah. Okay. I think it's worth checking out, though. I think I'm with you. I might try to come back and take mm -hmm. a peek here, and maybe. Explore a little bit more down the road. Okay. It looks good. All right, cool. Yeah, again, that's probably me and me and my dad. We'd be like, if we play it, we would have to play with other people. I yeah. saw, I saw we'll get about it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Right. Vengeful, thank yeah. you so much for the five month subscription. We appreciate that. And Scuba Steve, good to see you, and thank you for the good host. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys. I always think the uh, mm -hmm. one eighty seven is reasonable. I think the Polaris would be that or higher or what? The one eighty seven. You lost me million if it was 187 million or whatever it was to oh buy i, I have, listen i have no problem with military ships being in the hundreds of millions none whatsoever none yet none yet at all <laughs> for, the, for the amount for the amount of for amount of what they can do and their dollar value i have no problem with them being hundreds of 100 million because i'd be no equivalent than like a battleship in the military <laughs> right, 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 and so the higher you put that value, the less people are going to be doing stupid stuff with them too. I guarantee you that. So, True. all right, let's jump into these videos, guys. Purpose. Back to Star Citizen. Let's take a look at this very first one. <laughs> this very first video that we're going to look at is called Underground Infamy. Go. Your execution matches your enthusiasm.
Okay, let me start the other way around this time. Uh, Pops, I'll start with you this time. Out of all those things we saw there, uh, let's see, Uriah the Smoke, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, Pops, uh, out of all those different things they showed in the video there, which one caught your attention the most? Well, I've, I've done uh, all of it. Mm -hmm. no, well, most of it, except for since I just got the... Um, the gray cat. Mm -hmm. We were trying to test it out. We were trying to get the other side and we wanted to do mine there. I couldn't get out the seat. So I wanted to see how it felt. Okay. Um so that to me that was probably most because I bought one. The rock mm -hmm. so the, the, the new rock that. DS, right? Yes, the okay. DS. Okay. And uh that was most exciting to me. Okay. I did the dock and uh Gotcha. Fist, what about you? Which out of all those items you saw in that, what what grabbed you the most with this underground infamy? the underground <laughs> gameplay <laughs> okay. okay well I mean, we, we, we have fun we have fun doing the um the cave missions okay you know that fun mm -hmm. that was good uh shenanigans we got ourselves into okay. um that and, and you know i just like i said again i mean, I, I wish uh of course i wish the the ai was there okay as far as uh you know the enemy ai you know to make things more interesting mm -hmm. you know but um, when you know you say that it was there. Me, you mean better? Yes, better. Okay, that's okay. what that's what I wish. I wish because the AI is just like it's it's really, I'm, for lack of a term, you know, it's really dumb. Mm -hmm. They they they're, they're not responsive to to what mm -hmm. you do gotcha. and flanking and taking cover and mm -hmm. all of those other things like that. Okay, gotcha. Admiral Kusanagi, what about you? Which one of those items caught your eye? Um. I just want to know if the Cyclone MT can one shot a an arrow like that. Mm. Like, is a size two <laughs> missile supposed mm. to be that good? This mm. patch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know it's hard to say, right? Because it's just a clip. We don't know if it got hit three or four times before they hit it, or whether it was a one shot. <laughs> so that's a good question. I, mean, I, I expect missiles to be stronger than they already than they are. Mm. Or, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just so close you didn't get a flare out. I'm not sure, but I mean, it was, it was, I mean, wow, like one shot with the you take out a whole fighter. It's pretty, mm -hmm. I mean, it's realistic, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right there. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, all right. Tenth, what caught your eye in there? You and, know, and, don't, um, and don't say uh, Twitch Pacheco because you'll get into a fight. Uh, with me. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> shoot. All right. Moving to number two. Um, no. The, uh, what was cool was we saw, I saw um, the uh, Star Runner coming mm. out of the big uh, hole in the cave, mm -hmm. uh, in the ground, mm -hmm. like a, I'm imagining his entrance to the cave. Yeah, the big thing. And uh, even, even it was just up a moment ago with the uh, ship to ship docking. Mm hmm. Okay. That looks pretty cool. Like I said, I haven't been able to check it out yet. So a lot of that, you know, a lot of this is like, okay, intrigue. Like, mm -hmm. I need to find some time to get back in, but it, it looks great. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we've been saying it runs like every patch runs. It, some people have great success. Some people mm -hmm. can't really get in, mm -hmm. you know, past the gender screens or character customization. Mm -hmm. But this makes it look great. Okay. It's, it's looking good. Okay. Yeah, you will definitely dig the sinkholes. I can I can tell you that now. It's they're pretty sinkholes, amazing, yeah. and they and they are deep. Yeah. They are mm -hmm. deep, brother. So uh, you, I, we, we were down a couple weeks. I think last week with Nihilus, and it was it was us and uh, what did we had we had three ships. We had a uh, there were three ships down there. There was a Vanguard, a Freelancer, and we were in a Gladiator, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, no, no, we were in a um a, a Hurricane. And there was still plenty of room down there for maybe one more ship. So they're 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 pretty wow. large areas. Yeah, they're pretty That's large. Nutty. Yeah. Okay. You know the the word the rock keeps coming up. Let's talk about the rock for a little bit because there's been a lot of controversy about this ship. And tenth, I know you've been away from a little bit, so the, I'm sure these guys will share with you with some of the controversy. Yeah, let's look at that one real this. quick. Okay.
Okay, let's start with the Admiral on this one. Admiral, what are your feelings about the Rock DS? Now, have you had a chance to monkey around with it? And if so, what are your feelings about it? Uh, well, first off, I just want to say that Tenth looked a little confused by that one if he hasn't seen it before. Uh, just a little bit. Keep going, though. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'm a little bit... Um, okay, so of course I, I haven't really liked it because you get the... Um, so, so he knows that the, the, the laser is only controlled by the boom operator. So the driver is only in there moving the thing and scanning and stuff like that and trying to get it around corners. And the boom operator has to be in the chair to use the laser. Um, I haven't been a fan of that because of that very reason where you, you've got elements, you know, you've got very hot or very cold. Mm -hmm. And you've got dangers in caves and stuff like that, and they're they're more vulnerable. Mm. Um, so, and I, I I just think that the the driver should have uh, capability to use the the boom arm, at least you know I don't know for the area that they can see, because it's obvious that it turns away maybe 130 degrees mm -hmm. around the the side of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but maybe if she could uh, he or she could use like you know the front, you know 45 50 degree angle, it'd be fine. Mm. Okay. Uriah the Smoke, thank you for the follow. Mazda, thank you for the cheered 50 bits. We appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Um, okay, thanks, Admiral. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got another guest drop in for us tonight. The man himself, Goldmap. Hey, Goldmap. Hey, hey, what's pop up, in. Uh, um, cool. There you go. What's up, Goldmap? Good, good, good. Uh, Fist, let's get your thoughts on the Rock, the DS. The Rock DS. Any thoughts on it? Well... I've had a slight change of heart okay. on it from my original opinion before, you know, when it first came out, I was like, uh, this one is, you know, CIG might want to take this one back to the uh, drawing board, you know, <laughs> <laughs> at first I was like, you know, yeah, they might want to do that. But then as they started to explain it, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the gameplay and the direction that they're going, as far as, you know, I believe they said, you know, having mineables on cave walls, mm -hmm. you know, things that the, the original rock, the smaller one, could not be able to reach. Mm -hmm. Plus, one of the things that the developers did say and mention was that you have to be mindful that, yes, right now you can create an infinite amount of boxes mm -hmm. when you're doing a job. You won't be able to do that when the game goes live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing, too, that, that struck me and said, yep, you know what, you're right. So a bigger, you know, um, uh, vehicle with a larger cargo hold will definitely be better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th those two things kind of struck me and started to make, started to change my mind. Plus the pack had, you know, some armor sets. Wait, 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 we ain't got to the pack yet. Just stay on the, on the okay, DS. Okay, we'll I'm get to the pack okay, in a second. That's bad. coming up. <laughs> that's <laughs> coming up. Yet, okay, okay, that's coming bad. up. Okay. Yeah, let me, I'm let, let me tell Mad Style, Mad Style, thank you. Make, you guys make sure to give Mad Style some love. He gave out 10 gifts uh, just now, 10 gift subscriptions. So Mad Style is always, hey. thank you hey, for, thanks, for taking style. care of the uh, Soul Citizen community. We really appreciate that. Uh, let me drop down to Pop. Go, Mab, I'll come back to you last. Pops, what about you? What did you, uh, you told me you guys got to monkey around a little bit with this DS. Are your feelings the same or have they starting to shift too? Um, mine shifted. Cause mm -hmm. I, I thought this thing was crazy. I <laughs> didn't make a bit of sense to me, but, um, uh, you know, and all the other things here, it, it, it does what, you know, what my son said that, that once they explained it mm -hmm. and they got to those, ones, the one thing that, that I noticed is a, it's, maybe it's minor, mm -hmm. but you, you have a great field of view and that seat. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if something's going to really sneak up on you. Plus as a defense, you can use the laser. Mm -hmm. Yep, you know, something does. Try to get to Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let's see, let me go to Go Map and then I'll hit tenth. Go map. Thoughts about it? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't really seen much of a gameplay reason mm -hmm. behind it other than, you know, mining with friends. Yeah. Um, you know, uh like you say, like if the, if they are if they are putting in 
uh, mineables on cave walls that are just up out of reach of that, mm -hmm. you know, regular rock arm, then that that seems to me a kind of a um, artificial way of giving this this tool relevance. I mean, you know, it, to, it, it's the age old adage, right? Is it better to have two people in the DS or mm -hmm. two people in two rocks? Right, right, right. You know, can you can you get more? Can you can you be more valuable for yourself and for mm -hmm. your org? Mm -hmm. um, you know. I, I did, I, 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 you know, I do like the new paints and stuff that came out with it, though, so I'm mm -hmm. cool with that. <laughs> okay, okay. Tim, one of the things about this new rock, just so you know, is that it's supposed to have a, a laser that has more range and more power, and they oh, also okay. increase the storage capacity of the vehicle itself. Those are the two main okay. things. That external seat is there. They also enclose the driver now in glass, where before that cage used to be open, but the person right. in the seat is still exposed on the outside. So those See, I guess that's my that's my problem. And I was when I saw when I look at this commercial initially, mm -hmm. I was going to ask like, is the does the driver finally enclosed? Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's an affirmative. But now you have an operator on the outside who <laughs> looks exposed <laughs> to the elements. Anyway, so mm -hmm. and I would imagine uh, kind of like what Admiral was saying or maybe alluding to a bit was you have the extreme weather conditions. So is the with this now? This is assuming that in later down the road that the uh, operators who sit inside of seats uh, will need to either have a special seat to sit in to accommodate the hot or cold weather gear they have on mm -hmm. or have to take that off to be inside. do the kind of mm -hmm. operation they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if the gray cat with without any protection, this mm -hmm. DS one of uh, the rock, um, will it re have room for someone to have those hot right. or cold weather suits on? Cause you have no protection at this point. Right. So I'm just, it's just kind of a head scratcher that way. Yeah. Um, and let, but, me, let me cut in on you on that. Cause the yeah. point you're making is that some people don't know this, that CIG has told us that even when you're flying your ships, you're not going to be wearing heavy armor and flying a ship. That's not going to happen. Right. That's the reason why you have lockers and stuff on your ship, because they're not going to allow you to wear heavy armor while flying a ship. Yeah. So right now on the DS, or the rather on the rock, you can put on the co hot cold suits when you're driving them that because because of the fact it's exposed. But you're to your point, it'll be interesting to see now that it's enclosed. And I don't know if anybody's ever tested that. Since this one is closed, do you have to have on the temperature suit? Uh, or are you okay? Yeah. Or does it just maintain you for oxygen and that's it? I, I don't know. Um, the thing I will that's say about this video is I did like the fact that they made it like a part two to the first rock video with the family that went out and did the mining. So it yeah. kind of picks up yeah. where it's the husband I mean, and yeah. the wife this time. And the first time it was the wife. I thought that was a nice continuation. Um, I'm iffy about the rock right now. I haven't had a chance to take it out. So I'm, I'm, I'm saving my judgment, but I will jump to go Mab real quick. And then I'm going to ask about the suits and stuff. Go Mab, what are your thoughts about the DS now? Oh, I'd asked you already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you're about to talk about the suits, that, that was going to be my next Okay, thing well, let's, let me, let me jump to the suits then. Let's talk about that and talk to me about the suits. And the paint jobs, whichever one you want to talk about. Well, yeah. Um, so the suits to me, well, we're talking about the like right now we've got the what, the, the Novikov mm -hmm. and the uh, I forget the other one's name, right? Mm -hmm. That are the hot and cold suits. And then to me, if they're going to be releasing these gray cat specific armors, I, I, I'm going to assume. And it, I read the I read the the notes that in, the more info on the suits. It didn't say it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to assume, yeah, Pembroke, thanks, Dark Knight. Um, I'm going to assume that these new suits are going to provide that environmental protection, uh, specifically for while you're mining, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's like, why? why you yeah. know uh but if that's the case i like the way they look and you know and i i, I can appreciate having these 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 purpose-built um armors in the game yeah. and i like the fact that they come in different colors and you can paint your you know rock or your rock ds to match it mm. okay okay pops did you buy any of the armors or the uh paint jobs for the rocks yeah i bought the um i bought the whole set you bought the whole set the yeah, the whole set. The whole set of both <laughs> paint jobs well, and armor, yeah, or just the paint, armor. Yep, yeah, paint jobs. Okay, and armor all of them. Okay. <laughs> I bought everything for it. Okay, fist. What I'm about trialing. you? Fist. Same. <laughs> oh, you the guys same. are killing me. Yeah, you you guys are killing me. Okay, Admiral, mm -hmm. did you did you dive in or did you where did you hold your wallet? I, I have 
currently holding my wallet. Okay. But um, I just posted in your images in Soul Citizen's Discord mm -hmm. uh, the picture of the red armor. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that and you blow it up, um, um, I don't know if you have time to show it, but if you actually look at that and, and blow it up and look at his over his right shoulder, mm -hmm. you'll notice a cable yep. or some type of tube. And yep. going off of what GoMab was saying, it's my belief that is that is a temperature controlled suit mm -hmm. that is that is not so much an armor like a heavy armor that the the current model the versions are, but one that is designed for mining vehicles and I, I was thinking about this last night i was looking at it i'm like you know what i wonder and i i kind of think right now that if you were a miner like forget the like you need this ship and that ship if you're going to do mining then you kind of need like this suit like above all mm -hmm. And like so, you see it like right over his right his right shoulder is this this tube, and it goes over his his right um his right elbow and comes down and stops around his like his wrist there. Mm -hmm. And I maybe the left one looks like that. I don't know, but it makes me think that the suit is is actually heated or cooled because mm. I don't know why you would need some type of electricity or power cable that's literally yeah. like an inch thick. Um, so I kind of yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's the same thing, assumption that I came up with. Exactly what GoMap said. And um, that it, it because my, my reason for thinking this was because the suit is not out now. If it was just armor, I would have thought they would have just put it out. So I would imagine there's some type of gameplay to it. Yeah. To the reason why it's coming out in the summer. Well, there are a couple things that I want to highlight about that suit. One thing about the suit in particular, but I want to go something that Jaja -Ja said. This is a little bit about the the, the uh, rock itself. He says, there's a good point made there. A driver is superfluous until you have rocks falling on your head. So that might be something to think about if you're in a cave uh, that your driver can't get you away fast if necessary. Um, one of the things I noticed about this suit, that there were four parts to this suit. Did you guys notice that? Not three. Normally Ooh. there's the legs, torso, well, four, five pieces, I'm sorry. Normally there's oh, the God. legs, the arms, the torso, and the helmet. But they also include a backpack. And I don't know if that backpack and Nihilus and I were talking about this last night. I assume that the backpack was functioning the same as the rucksack pack. But is am mm -hmm. I wrong? Is it doing what Admiral just talked about? Is it something to do it's with whether because it is based upon this whole mining dynamic? So do we know what the buck pack pack does? Has anybody monkeyed around with that pack yet? Have they tried it on? Is it something that you can carry things in for inventory or is it non-functioning? And maybe it does have some other function. I'm well, really the suit's not out till this it. summer. Yeah, we won't oh, that's right. That's later. right. Not till later. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. That's right. That lets you know yeah. why I didn't, I didn't buy them. There, there you go. So, okay. but, but, you, but it, you know, you could, you got to think about it. There's mm -hmm. going to also be hand mineables that you're going to have to have True. ability to carry as well. So I do think that that backpack Folks, being like a part of it because, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, also the, the Novikov and the Pembroke have large capacity backpacks mm -hmm. on them as well. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I imagine right now we have two suits that we have to switch back and forth to depending on the environmental mm -hmm. um, factors. I believe this one will probably be like, you know, if it's hot, it'll, it'll cool you. If it's cold, it'll heat you up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping, at least. That will make a lot more sense and make me feel a lot better for shelling out the money to buy it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, if you look at the picture, he is standing in the cold. Yeah. Yeah, on that particular one. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. So yeah. okay. it might not have like the same temperature range, mm -hmm. but certainly like, because I mean, that Pembroke stuff is like really thick. Yeah. But I mean, this looks like he's protected against, you know, well, I don't know, negative 100 degrees or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good points, guys. All right. Plus, the helmet is really cool. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really cool design. I look at J2 says it looks more like something alien than it looks like necessarily yeah, from Grey Cat. That. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Battleship, the alien from Battle, yeah. Battleship. Yeah. <laughs> Synth, you and I, you, you, would you buy the armor? Would you buy it? Or are you kind of one of those people that would wait? Or, you know, when it comes to, do you, you know, care if your I, rock is painted red or orange? <laughs> or No, no. That's the thing. Like, what I appreciate about what I hear mm -hmm. is that the vertical for mining mm -hmm. is getting a little bit deeper mm -hmm. um with the addition of the ds mm -hmm. and the you know the 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 um colorways and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. i as just in my in my uh, how i want to play mm -hmm. is i'd probably just get the base 
okay. and kind of see how I want to go from there. But I can appreciate this for sure. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Admiral, thanks for sending that picture. We appreciate it. That was very helpful. Yeah, that was good, Admiral. Very helpful. Okay, let's jump into uh, Inside Star Citizen. Uh, we had a pretty interesting one this week. Um, they opened up talking about, and, and you might like this because it gets you caught up a little bit, Tim. Uh, they ended yeah. up uh, talking about the new studio uh, that's uh, CIG okay. opened up, and then they're going to give us an update on things that are just in the game in general. So let's kind of take a quick look at that. Yep. What was the first thing you guys thought of each other the first time you met each other? What's the first thing that come to mind? Like in the flesh? We have a very bad attitude in person. On camera, we're more re reasonable. Look at that charisma. I, look, uh, <laughs> I was just blinded by all of that. I thought Louis is taller than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I think I thought the same. <laughs> wow. Clowned him. I'm Benoît Sejour. I'm uh, the CTO here at Turbulent, and so creating this studio is is a is a really great opportunity, and I think that we're lucky to have Louis, Pierre Luc, and Guillaume uh, with us uh, on this journey to build a super amazing locations team here in Montreal. And so I met all these guys separately, which was interesting. But the the pitch for the job interview was really about pitch for the job interview was really studio from scratch for the in an existing in family. And so to be able, able to get there. So we needed a group of very motivated, so a group of very, you know, pillars to get this started. And I you think even that... bought a Spears. Yes, sir. Spears and the food. I did, I did, I did, I did. That's how I got you guys on board. <laughs> okay, so I thought we would start by just going around the table and just introduce ourselves and uh, what you guys do at the at our new at this new studio in Montreal. All right. Uh, well, I'll start. If you guys are okay with it, I'm Louis Rousseau, uh, lead designer <laughs> at Turbula. Uh I am responsible for all the location and design uh, aspect of why this location is there, what is the player doing while he's there, and that kind of consideration. Uh, that's my jam. Pierre Luc Boulet, I'm an art director here in Montreal. Um, basically, I'm art directing and leading an amazing team of artists. I can't, I cannot express how much I'm happy and I am humble and I have gratitude to, to lead this amazing team full of talent. I, without them, we are nothing. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows about it. All right. And I'll, uh, I'll book in that, uh, that topic. So, uh, Basically, I'm Guillaume Vogel, I'm the producer here. So taking care of schedule, taking care of dependencies and making sure we have a good planning to actually deliver really good quality and defining the, studio, the vision of the studio. Uh, lots of recruiting and talking to a lot of people and assembling a, a kick-ass team. So let's uh, go over a bit of our, of our history. So how did you, did you guys, uh, where do you come from and how do you get, you guys get started and got to, to this point? Uh, here. Uh, I started in the industry in 2003 and 2004. I was coming out of university and uh, mostly in a cine cinematography kind of study. Hmm. I didn't know you had a, a background in, in cinema. That's interesting. I do too. I, I did my uh, university degree in cinema and then um, after a, a few years uh, working the sets, I've transitioned to a level design um, formation which got me into Ubisoft. We're just nice. crossing street. Uh, <laughs> we're just crossing street together, following yeah. Yeah. each other yeah. from a studio to another. So I worked for Ubisoft uh, like eight years, mostly on the Tom Clancy franchise. So I work uh, on many, many Rainbow Sixes, um, traveled a bit for Ubisoft, L2, and some project like Red Steel in Paris and stuff. And I also returned to Ubisoft briefly before um, I, I, I f finally caught up to you. That's an achievement. <laughs> we all caught up to Benoit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, you guys heard it before, but, uh, you know, I joined the project uh, right after the first Kickstarter and I've been supporting all the platform efforts uh, since the beginning. And fast forward uh, into the future to the subject of today where we start a uh, locations team to expand 
you know the world of star citizen and so basically the 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 story is transitioning to the game space and really help uh, make the project a reality uh and then that's where you guys come in all right um so basically i started as a tester in video games uh i, I remember my first gig was a, a multiplayer testing weekend on rainbow six raven shield and i had to bring my my big CRT, uh, my big CRT screen, and my desktop tower on the metro. I moved then to EEA Montreal for my big uh, first big AAA uh, job as an assistant producer, and that's really when I, I took the the, produ the production track, and then uh, switched to Warner, where obviously I met uh, Pierre Luc, and then I started working on the DLCs for Batman Arkham Knight with Rock City, and uh, I figured it was an interesting time to. To, to completely change and uh, immigrate to, to London. Uh, so I switched, uh, I, I went to live in London and work at Rock City. And uh, finally I was uh, missing Montreal, I was missing friends and family. So I decided to come back uh, and I uh, decided to go to Ubisoft. And uh, during that time, Pierre Luc and I, we had really reconnected and we've started looking uh, for for other opportunities together and we found uh, we found Subrina. so it feels we're, we're at a unique opportunity at a unique point in time it feels absolutely amazing to be to be in this position so guys we came here with a very specific mission uh so maybe we should talk a bit about that guillaume why don't you in your own words explain what what it is we're trying to achieve here Oh, I'm getting spotlighted. I, I'm surprised it wasn't yeah. given yeah. No, no, to Pierre no, Luc. No, no, no hesitation. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. going um, to... Basically, our goal uh, eventually is to, be, to, become, to go at, at a level where it, our team can produce entire star systems. We don't want to create only like nice Vista. We want to create content that brings purpose to the brand and to the IP and to the project. So everything, every hour we make, every decision we make, it's going toward that goal. Of course, it won't happen like in three months, but this is always the end goal. And by that, we mean not only locations or not only design, like to have an integrated team that can work alongside the other teams at CIG and collaborate, but eventually be able to say, okay, let's do this star system and really develop it as much as possible, including gameplay, including putting a lot of things. Right. So in order for the, for the team to reach or graduate to being able to make full star systems, obviously this doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, the team needs some, some, some real projects that they can deliver to, to to players that they can play, right? We know of a couple things that are in Stanton that would add gameplay value, right? So we know that we're adding rooftop gameplay, hospital locations, which is brand new as well, and leveraging procedural tools to make a lot of variations to all of those. We are, I want to say, blessed to to be to 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 receive a shot at this. Like the timing was just good for us to look at these locations and say, what if I was able to land a ship there, like I already can, but what if I could go inside? What what would I find? What kind of missions would I do on New Babbage? What kind of mission would I do on, on Lorville? And essentially give a reason for the players to stick around on a planet for a while and, and not just be QTing like a ping pong ball all the time, but just say like, yeah, I, I love New Babbage. I can I can spend a lot of time here and, and then experience the, the planet more thoroughly. We're, we're producing right now the hospitals for every major landing zone and down the road we'll build them for this space station too. We are already hands on producing those those nice locations that you will get the chance to see soon enough in Lorville, in Grimex, on Artcorp, on New Bad Vision Horizon. And we're gonna expand those hospitals uh, across the verse as we still continue to grow and learn all together in this crazy COVID time. We've been lucky to have Guillaume, Benjamin and Valentin uh, reaching out uh, and, and, and wanting to, to look at this opportunity. Uh, the goal for them is to build up a solution that's really uh, oriented around layouts. Our first proof of concept is, is Space Station. So how can we help the workflow for the Space Station for artists and designers to build them more quickly? The second phase will be looking into developing rules in Udzini so that the Udzini can actually generate layouts and for those layouts to be then edited by a person and at least on the Space Station and maybe then in some caverns or 
or locations like that that we can actually give more gameplay to the player without sacrificing any terms of quality. The thing is, like, even on the design side, like the the way Star Citizen is developed is truly unique. There's really no no competition that I can think of here in Montreal that that offers an opportunity like that to really craft and and focus on. Well, I guess you said it best, yeah, like, like kick-ass mandates and and just like deliver that and then move on to the next and expand and keep growing like that. Uh, you know, one, one thing that we, you know, we've obviously this segment is about this new group and this new team, but this team would be nothing without, you know, the CIG family just totally embracing this effort. Well, I hope these guys, uh, the, the viewers and everyone like knows that we're fans as well. We're not just like here on a business like to, to to make a game like we are working on star citizen as as a, a privilege and it's like we play the game we we share the same sentiment that many many other players are, are, are sharing we've been looking at uh, the reception that you guys had on the Daryl lake and on the news that we've given so far and the reception is is, is really nice and it's 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 heartwarming to see that like we hear you, we, we read what you have to say, we listen to the videos and all of that, and it's really just, yeah, a real pleasure to put like our shoulders to the wheel and, and, and try to make this be mud move forward. So yeah, thanks for having us. I'm sure that uh, we're gonna be able to do great things and just watch us go. You know, my biggest wish is that, you know, we get to contribute as much as we can to this project, you know, by helping other teams, by shipping locations, by, you know, inheriting mandates and contributing to the larger whole, which is, you know, ultimately we all have the same objective, which is to make, you know, the biggest, baddest space MMO ever made. The new game development studio that's been formed under the turbulent umbrella is an exciting new addition to the Cloud Imperium Games family and their mandate of bringing new gameplay to existing locations, creating a bevy of hospitals for medical gameplay, and advancing our modular systems will be exciting preludes to their ultimate objective, the creation of entire star systems. And you can expect we'll be checking in with them on all of our programs moving forward. But up. Okay, let's stop there for a moment before we jump in any further. Uh, this whole thing with Turbulent, you know, is we all got the news this year. They decided to open up this sixth studio up in Montreal. Uh, they're literally right across the street from Ubisoft. Um, Admiral, what did you think about seeing these guys? You know, are you impressed? Waiting to see what happens? I mean, I think, uh, first off, I think, you know, what Panther uh, Modern said, um, you know, hits the spot. He's like, they, they really seem to really care about the project and each other. Mm -hmm. And for to be in charge of his team and say, hey, you know, we, I wouldn't be here without the people underneath me. I mean, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's that type of professionalism and um, caring for his team that really shows you what these people are about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's the, the type of um, individuals we want to like, to make this thing into what we are hoping it can be. Okay, okay. Fist, what about you? What'd you think of uh, this video? Oh man, I enjoyed it uh, because number one, they spoke on some of the games that I definitely enjoy playing. Rainbow Six, mm -hmm. Sam, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I I, I like I like that. Plus, number one, um, one of the things that he mentioned was was very key um, for me is that they talk about content being on the planets, mm -hmm. and it's just not a station. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get there drop something off, get back in my ship, and I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we talked about this before, too, as far as, you know, Chris Roberts wanting you to live on your ship, but they're actually um, talking about, you know, staying on the planet and mm -hmm. the planet kind of becoming maybe more of a social hub, mm -hmm. in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of MMOs are. Okay. Um, so I would like to see what they do with that, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah. Pops, they talked about the fact that all those little game elements they showed us, you know, they showed us like maybe what homesteads would look mm -hmm. like. They showed us the hospital. But then at the end, um, uh, Disco said that ultimately, it, and this is the first thing that we heard about them, that this studio was really being made to build systems, to build all the systems mm -hmm. that are going to grow in the game. Um, let me just ask you a question. This, does it seem like this is a smart idea? Because, 
you know, there's always been this wrestling of what are these folks working on? Are they working mm-hmm. on Squadron 42? Are they working on Star Citizen? Do you think it's kind of a smart move to have a studio that's just kind of dedicated to this whole thing of, you know, putting out systems? That's, that's, what, uh, that's their main thing. Uh, it's always been a very, uh, I've seen it done quite a few times and it's failed. Other companies have hired other companies. Mm-hmm. I'm just, uh, I can't really think it's like two games, but I don't really remember where they, they just went in and just completely failed. They were supposed to port the game so that the game could, you know, go from Xbox and mm-hmm. work with PCs and, and they, I think it was Batman the game I'm mm-hmm. thinking of. Um, so it, it can be a very uh, dangerous way to go. Mm-hmm. But Panther uh, again uh, made a good good point that these guys care, and I think that was their main message that they were trying to put out to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. in charge of this, but we care about it just as much as you because we we're playing it so i i think i think their hearts are in the right place that's okay. most of all i think that's what's very okay go map the clips that they showed us the hospital the you know the the uh hab stuff like that um and they talked about these missions being able to do things in these different what we can a lot of people consider now empty spaces promising to you Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the 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 pedigree of that team coming, you know, being being game developing, um, you know, they, they having a lot of experience in that space, mm-hmm. and 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 coming from places where they were outcome driven with you know uh, rapid iterations, you know, where they were they were able to crank content out and, and get it done right. I, you know, I believe that that's going to you know hopefully speed up a lot of this stuff and, and, and do it with uh with a high level of fidelity right yeah. um uh a, a, another thing right that really sticks out to me is that this this could be like the the, the first one of the first um you know forays that cig is tying out to 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 their modularity right i've always thought that cig should be like if they were building a a platform mm-hmm. that where they were able to allow a lot of these like external studios to really focus on delivering the content, mm-hmm. uh, right? So CIG was building the the back end, the servers, and and some of the baseline content, but they they were able to farm out to like the turbulence and the other studios mm-hmm. to to build like you know the star systems, the planets. I mm-hmm. mean, imagine if you had five or ten different studios building different star systems right? right you would get different feels and and looks and and, and characteristics for each studio for mm-hmm. each uh, star system because it would be done by different people right. think about that on the level of ships right if you right. if you could start breaking breaking out those the uh, say hey look origin is going to be you know developed by these you know these five guys in europe sipping tea all the time right, right, right. um meanwhile you know Drake is going to be developing the coal mine somewhere with some guys with some hard hats <laughs> on, right? You know, I mean, but yeah. be able to split that stuff out and and really start letting letting things speed up, right? I think that could be really big for the game, right? Well, to your point, and just so you'll know, that is exactly what they did with the ship manufacturers. The UK offices have certain manufacturers, LA has certain manufacturers, Austin has certain manufacturers, which is why you do have the various designs. But to connect to something that Pop said, go Mab, because you led into this. And let me take you guys in 10th. You'll remember this, right? In the history of Star Citizen, we had a company mm-hmm. at one point that we did several that we used to subcontract to. One of them yeah. was the infamous yeah, yeah. Ilphonic. Remember Ilphonic? Now, that was it. And, and, that was and, it. and what happened was the parent company didn't have certain things in place. Like you were just saying, Go Mab had these certain tools all ready to go and everything. CIG was still working on that stuff. And one of the big things that they didn't have down in the early days was the game metrics for ships. So Ilphonic went and built all this stuff and made all these things. And then they found out that the metrics that they did in house didn't match the stuff that CIG had. And they had to toss all of it out. Right, 10th? And yeah. so what did CIG do, do, do? They got rid of all the subcontractors, <laughs> brought everything in house. Everything in house. And, and basically started over. Hate to say that, but that's actually, mm-hmm. we showed a few weeks ago, the original FPS model. That all got scrapped because of that yeah. mistake that was made when they brought in a third-party company. But to Shive's point, hey, Shive, 
Shive says that bringing in, as you said, Pops, bringing in a third party company can be a good thing too. And I think that now they're being way more particular about bringing folks in. Because if you remember, Turbulent first came on board because they were doing the website. The web dash, that's right. That's <laughs> and great. over the years, yeah. they've grown into having these other spaces of things that they're doing. And now they're at the point now where they're partnering with them at the development level. Um, so you're, all you guys' points are, are right on the mark, 100% on the mark. Tenth, let me ask you this. Yeah. It was only a few months ago that we saw sketches of the homesteads, right? Of the housing. Yeah. Now yeah. we're seeing full blown white box, gray box. Uh-huh. Is this That's a right. lesson? Is this a lesson for for the community and and even for people who are trying to understand development? Because there are a lot of people when those sketches came out, they were like, "Oh, we're not going to see that for another two to three years." But the reality <laughs> of it is that they were probably working on it two or three years ago. And when they showed us those That's sketches, right. they just when they chose to show us those sketches, it had nothing to do with the timeline. So listen, listen. How do we deal with if that? You- if if you really think about it, the the mandate for the new study studio in in Montreal was to build out star systems, mm-hmm. and one of the chief things that I would you got it, I know developers hate thinking about it like this, but you have to look at things from a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. You just have to. It's a CIG. You said before they 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 they've been a. Uh, they they they've grown up a lot, right? You know, from let's contract out everybody mm-hmm. because it's more cost efficient to let's make some of these things more closely held and have a longer timeline for it and carry the cost of adding these teams and studios as part of the CIG family. Mm-hmm. When you bring a a company on uh, or some people on, there's cultural things to think about. But I the thing that I was impressed with was the fact that CIG is thinking like a big boy company would. Their promise was hundreds of star systems, and each one of those star systems was explorable, and there's things to do there. This team is the beginning of Mm. that systematic process, right? Mm. And for them to have homesteads, you know, you saw the sketches, and CIG and the the senior leadership and the teams there are thinking down the road. Mm -hmm. They just have to build... they're thinking down the road, and as they move towards that, they're putting people in place. Mm-hmm. So my thing is turbulent, you know, turbulent being on the website a mm-hmm. um, couple years back or doing doing the, the, the website. Mm-hmm. It it almost comes to that point where CAG's like, we got to start thinking about this, mm-hmm. and they look around and they say, all right, how are we going to scale out this, these star systems? And they look around and say, who do we have? What's closely held? And hey, look, Turpinant does a lot of work. They're a dev studio. They have mm-hmm. these guys. There's guys from Ubisoft. There's guys. Let's talk to them, right? right. And so now it becomes a a, a more um, streamlined process. So I was very excited to hear about the guys there. I think that the the decision was a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, they they these guys are they're they're hunters. They're killers. They 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 got something to prove. <laughs> they have done you know for uh, they they have done they have put some things out that have looked great. Um, but I think at the same token, like they, they have a lot that they want to do. And I think that's what CIG really needs at this point. So I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and what they'll put for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Real quick. Uh, hey, hang on a second. Uh, one second. Pops. Just want to okay. let everybody know that Uriah has joined us. Uriah, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were up in general. Thank you, Go Mab, for dropping the message to me. I kept looking for him and looking for him and then I never saw him. And then I took my eyes away and then he popped up. So Uriah, thank you. We want to welcome you for here. We'll let Pops see what he has to say. Then we'll hear what Uriah has to say. Go ahead, Pops. Yeah, um, I just wanted to uh, make something that that they said that they were going to, um, the planets themselves were going to be more than just drop-off points, per se, like we do now. We go drop-off park. There was going to be actual gameplay Mm -hmm. um, inside Mm -hmm. buildings. Uh, I know we know about the hospital, but it uh, looked like it was going to be missions. Maybe it was going to be missions that were specific solely on the planet, maybe you have to uh, uh, get in a car and travel here, travel there. Mm-hmm. And they were going to make those more exciting. Mm-hmm. With a mm-hmm. lot more depth content. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when, uh, when our corp first got built, Pops, and I think you guys probably weren't around when that happened. When we first got our corp, they told us then, because if you know how when you go to our corp and you go up on the buildings, and when you go inside, there's that one building where there's a drop box, but then there are other, you can actually go sometimes mm-hmm. through that second door but you can't go into the building downstairs. And they told us a long time ago that there would be missions and things that would be in those facilities, not just drop missions like you're saying, but actual 
missions of things that you have to do. There will be NPC characters there. Um, you won't be able to, they told us, you won't be able to go into every building, but there will be a lot of them that will be accessibles that have elevators, floors, the whole nine yards uh, for mm. you to be able to do different types of missions in them. So absolutely. Um, the, the, the whole world building is not just like you said, and I'm again, I don't want to, I'm not trying to say anything negative about Elite, but when Elite first came out, you had all these great moons and worlds, but there was nothing to do when you got there. Eventually they made it where you could land on them and then you could take a rover out on them and you could drive around. Then they started building some facilities on some of them. Uh, I mm -hmm. personally believe that when Turbulence starts doing these systems, for those of you who've been around for a long time, you know, when we got Stanton, it all came in pieces, right? We started out with, you know, Port O and then it went to Hurston and mm -hmm. then it went to R Corp yep. and then it went to, that's, I don't believe that's the way they're going to drop now. I believe that when they drop, it's going to be dropping a system completed. Now I'll tell you Absolutely. why I say that. Last year, early last year on the roadmap, in fact, uh, they told us that they were already working on Pyro 4. They were doing mm -hmm. that particular moon a year ago. So mm -hmm. my feeling is, is that when we get Pyro, it's not going to be, well, you get the gate, here's Pyro, and there's nothing to do. Pyro, I believe Pyro 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are going to be in place. I believe the moons are going to be in place. Now, how much of the mission aspect is there or all population, that's another thing. But I honestly believe that these teams are working... You know, and I guess my point to 10 Sigma was that we can't gauge from our view what their timeline is, you know, because in real time, it feels like things aren't happening. But who knows that there aren't. In fact, I even told and this is my little prediction. Y'all don't have to quote. Don't don't quote me on this, y'all, because I don't get in trouble. I honestly believe when Citizen Con comes this year, we're not going to see Pyro. I honestly believe we're going to see Pyro and maybe Nyx. That's what I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Absolutely. they've been working well, on it. Nix, Nix was done. trying to get people strokes. They were trying to do. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that we, we <laughs> can't look at development in real time like that. They've been working on Nick. We saw stuff from Nix four years ago. So to assume right. that Nix isn't going to start now just because Turbulent just got started, I think that's a mistake. I think that they've been doing this stuff. The question is, how much of it will mm -hmm. they reveal? And again, based upon what's the true purpose of revealing it? If the capacity for servers isn't there yet, it, that's why, and I know we don't want to make this sound like a Jesus patch because it's not, but until we get that eye caching and server meshing and stuff in and get numbers up, it doesn't make a difference to add all the extra real estate because we can't even take advantage right. of it, you know? So I, I, but I just personally believe that, and you guys saw the little hint that was in the letter for Citizen Time this year. The little hint from I think Uriah is coming. Okay, the little hint from Citizen Con said that they will be out of this world or maybe out of this system. So we already know that they're inkling towards something like that. Let's get Uriah in on this real quick. Uriah, hey, how are you? Can you hear us? We can't hear you, Uriah. You may have to uh, reset Discord. You're having the same problem that Face Fist had earlier. Try resetting Discord real quick. You're lighting up, but you're not coming through, buddy. Well, well, I'll, I'll add can, I, can I? Oh, I was going to, I'm sorry. I was going to ask a question. Good, but good. Okay, we asked a question, then I wanted to just jump in real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I wanted to ask a question because since we talked about, you know, like he said, going down to the planet, right? Mm -hmm. I remember seeing, um, and I know if Colossal's, Colossal is in, um, in, in a chat still, they talked about um, the Bandle Merchant Man. And I know when I've seen the concept bar for the Bandle Merchant Man, it's landed on a planet. Right. And it's like a city. So I would like to know what planet is that? It's no, is that, that, that's all concept art. That's all concept, concept art. art. It's concept okay. art. And, that, and, and, and remember, the Banu Merchantman is a okay. it is a trade vessel. It is a it's right. like a flying bazaar. That's what that is. What city they were okay. in? God only knows if it was Terra. I, I don't know. I know what you're talking about the big one where it was surrounded by all. It was like on a fl big landing pad. Yeah, that, yeah that's concept art. Yeah, concept art. Okay. Benjamin yeah. says the BMM is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> you, think uh -oh. I'm get, you think I'm getting people worked up? That'll get people worked up saying that. Okay. <laughs> that will definitely get people worked up. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Admiral, you were going to ask. Oh, right. wait, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. You yeah, got something else, really... was No, no, no. no. I, it, it, was, it was just saying, it's just, it's just that because I've seen that plan, I was like, man, you know, no, 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 Don't trust nothing if it's concept art. Oh man, I was like, because yeah, it was like, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna be able to travel to this, to this, to this. Oh, you this. will, you will, you will. But but just understand <laughs> you know, that that was his concept art. Because they okay. told us, they've told us several times that even that image was not a final image of the BMM. Nobody really knows what it looks like because they had to go. The BMM was one of those ships that yeah. from the very beginning, okay. when I talked about before metrics, 
There, there were okay. like there were like six ships that were in that category, and all those ships changed all in right. size and dimension. So they had to go back and completely redo the yeah. BMM. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, right. you, you, you told me that. So, so basically, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take your advice and go maps. Don't trust concept art. There you That's go. It. There Don't you go. Work. It's nice to look all at. Right. Yeah. I got you. Okay, Admiral, right. go ahead, Admiral. <laughs> jump in, man. Yeah. So, uh, just to talk about uh, you know turbulent the company. Mm -hmm. You know, from from as everyone's been you know watching the campaign, mm -hmm. we, we just to think about like what they've actually done for all of us. Mm -hmm. Even though we've had issues with you know Spectrum and had like like why is this here, but like they've done the star map and Galactopedia. Yes. They've done all the marketing campaigns. So like the the, the brochures that you mm -hmm. look in. Do I want to buy this ship? They've done the even the mini games that we've played. They do tel telemetry. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. Spectrum and like the concierge, they mm -hmm. do all that, all That's that type of stuff. stuff. So really, they've been like the face of Star Citizen since the beginning. Yep. And if you recall, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sig bought 20% of Turbulent. Yep. So now Turbulent is a part. Now, mm -hmm. like, you know, Star Citizen and Turbulent are kind of like, you know, they have, you know, uh, not responsibilities so much, but like a. Uh, even greater reason to support uh, mm -hmm. us, you know, the community. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't know, you know, we think about like you're talking about having maybe three systems by this time next year. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they the Frankfurt Agreement that just passed this month. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, we're getting a th uh, a new building in Frankfurt that's going right. to be completed in 20, 2022. And it's a thousand, three thousand square mm -hmm. uh, meter mm -hmm. rental space. Yep. Like Sig has already said, hey, bam, we want three thousand square meters of rental space mm -hmm. when that when this thing is done in twenty twenty two. So it's a Listen, who knows how many more people are going to be joining the company. That's exactly it, Admiral. I'm just going to cut in real quick because you make a great point about when you look at CIG and their financials and how they lag through um, on the reporting uh, each year, but you see year over year over year a positive change in their net assets or net income, whatever you want to call it, they were stockpiling to make moves like this, mm. buying percentages of company. This is, a, this is a capacity move, right? And that's the thing that Griff was, I think you were alluding to earlier, was when you look at just the game, you're going to say, oh, why don't we have such and such and such and such? When you're in the roadmap, you're going to see, why isn't this, 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 and that? But when you look at it from a business standpoint, they're making capacity moves for the next few years mm -hmm. that will set them up to soar past the finish line to deliver the product that they want to. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm for it, man. The, the, you're going to see. I, I, if you're asking me from from, from my perspective, you're going to be you're going to see tons more money spent in um, human resource and um, and human capital, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, yep. and marketing, right? Um, you're, you're going to, cause I think they've laid a lot of the, the groundwork for the tools that they need, mm -hmm. uh, to do the work. Remember a long time ago, Griff, I, I think we, we were on a show and, uh, it was one of those star citizens that, uh, those star SCLs that weren't, wasn't particularly interesting, but mm -hmm. it was kind of like about painting, uh, the tools, and everything. Uh, planet, mm -hmm. the tools right. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but that was really critical. Yeah. I think that, because that meant that's equal speed yeah. right yep. so um the little things that people are like how can we can't see the guns or the development of each ship this ship and that ship and you get snooze fest with like these tech tools like watch those things because they uh, why you why i don't understand it all all of it um, i know from a business perspective if it helps teams work faster mm -hmm. you're going to see the product at the end so just, hang in there hang absolutely. in there but we're, we're on the way absolutely uh, let me and let me clarify something some money yeah let yeah. me clarify something too because admiral kusanagi said something that i didn't say even though it may have sounded like it i said when citizen con comes they're going to show us two new systems <laughs> they're going to give it to us i'm not saying they're going to give it to us next year i just believe that we're going to see it and i wouldn't be surprised if pyro did come out this year i don't know if a third system will but my point is inside I think they're information uh -huh. is stating that yeah we're going to have three systems oh okay okay, Ooh, okay. that's what griff okay. That's, what, that's what you said right griff no As i heard that no like, i did not say that inside i did just man inside man. trading <laughs> Let me, guys, let me get Uriah in, because Uriah's been trying to get yeah. in for a while. Uriah, how are you? All right. Can You're you hear me? Awesome. Yes. There we can hear you true. nice and clear. Awesome. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, damn, so much has been said. I don't know where to go and come in from. Uh, that's okay. With just whatever you had thoughts on. Just share with us real quick. Um, 
Okay. Okay. So um, I've been talking to a lot of people in the community mm -hmm. about certain ideas that I've had and the developers and in the video they spoke on a lot of the things that I was on the same vibe I had mm -hmm. of uh in the cities modeling after what they did with uh microtech mm -hmm. and applying that mm -hmm. to the uh, to the old cities mm -hmm. uh it was really good to hear them to like confirm that they're going to work on rooftop gameplay mm -hmm. and uh really develop the city into an actual city for like our corp and and uh her mm -hmm. especially our corp because I, I enjoy being at our corp mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. So those things was really good. Mm -hmm. By the way, stay uh, away from Twitch if you go to our corp. That's that's my don't you know stay away from her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. She my go to. <laughs> oh, she go to. Okay, okay. I, I had to talk to her about that. But go ahead. <laughs> I go to her for things before anybody. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's funny. That's that's really funny you say that. <laughs> um uh, that's that's really all I have to say. Though. Okay. That it, someone else hasn't already said it. Well let me ask you a question. Why did you pick R Because most of these other cats on here, they like going to New Babbage. They like going to Apple City. Well, I'm I'm an R Corp person it. personally. I'm an R Corp person. Oh, I'm R Corp all the day, man. Are uh, you go man? Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, I know, I know. Pops and Fist, they be living in no new Babbage all the time. Sit up there. Hey, no, 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 wait, 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 I tell you what, guys, we're going to yeah, yeah. jump into SCL. Um, let's get into that because it's an hour-long program. And I know, are you guys got some strength tonight? I know, it's tough. This is tough. Oh, yeah, this one was, bro. Yeah, I, I this didn't is watch tough. it just because it was going to be on tonight. So yeah, uh, I'm here for the... Yeah, okay. If you're going to watch it, I'm here for it. All right. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not a sleeper, but it's just it's an hour. So I'm just kind of bracing uh, yourself. I can get a pillow. You're... That's fine. I can get a pillow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all want to get something to drink and some snacks? We'll go ahead and do it. I, but I will tell you yeah. this. I have a really good machinima tonight. I, this okay. machinima had me cracking okay. up laughing. Right. So if, right. if if you pass out, make sure you wake up for the machinima. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, <laughs> but just I, just blow an air horn. Oh, wait a minute. Air horn you know what? You know what? Finishes. You know what? Maybe we won't get to do it because we still got to do the roadmap. So maybe we won't okay. get to do we won't okay, get to do cool. S, we won't get to do uh, SCL. But let's because I know y'all gonna want to talk about the roadmap stuff. So let's do that. Okay. And I, I honestly don't think we're gonna get it done by twelve thirty. So let's let's do that because okay. that'll be two hours and it'll be three hours if we go longer. So let's let's finish up with disco here. It's one oh five. It you I don't know, you're no, talking, no, no, I'm, saying, I'm in I'm, the future right now. So I, I know, but you're gonna be at least twenty <laughs> minutes on this subject. I guarantee you that. So let's let, no, I get let it. me pick yeah. up on that. Okay, here we go. Next, it's sprint report time. So let's get to it. Starting things off this week is the VFX team who's been working to address an issue with the readability of ship thrusters at distance, which has been virtually non-existent in the past, where you can have swarms of ships without the, the life and energy in them that we're looking for. This issue actually becomes compounded with the recent addition of gas clouds, can you hear where us? ships and debris can become obscured mm -hmm. completely at greater ranges. Oh. <laughs> now to that end, the team has begun working on applying the same long distance emissive particles currently used for missiles to the ship thrusters. And while it's still early days and there's a lot of finessing left to do, the initial work already makes quite a change to the scene as it is. As the team continues polishing that, they've also identified the missing ship contrails as an issue they'd like to prioritize. They were lost in the effects package that was originally implemented for gas clouds and the VFX team is eager to bring them back with gas cloud specific effects for added visual benefit. And all this same work will also benefit flight in atmosphere during things like sandstorms and other inclement weather. Moving on to the environment teams, 
More harvestables are being concepted in development for the upcoming Pyro system, including these devil pods of Pyro 4. Referred to as the animate tree, this is a dried and expansive stock that grows pods that can be harvested by citizens for the manufacture of heat-resistant textiles. Of the eight options seen here, we're thinking five and six are the ones that will likely move forward. There's also Jara's Veil, a wind anemone of Pyro 3 of frilly, brightly colored plants designed to grow on the edge of cliffs instead of feeding on soil. Their flower-like growths can be collected and used for medical study. Current thinking is that options 1 and 2 will be moving forward here. Speaking of the pyro system, it wouldn't be a sprint report without a look at the continuing progress of our colonialism outposts being worked on, or pyro, and other frontier systems. Now this week, the props team has begun whiteboxing out some of the various accoutrements that may one day fill the interior spaces. Things like beds. Rugs that will eventually get some nice physicalized deformation so they really tie the rooms together. All manner of lamps. Drapes that can hang in front of windows and diffuse the runtime lighting in new and exciting ways. And some righteous pottery to unchain the melodies of our hearts. That's a joke for the 90s people who will understand that reference. Moving on to vehicles, in the most recent monthly report, available each month on the robertspaceindustries.com website, check it out, we mentioned new gold standard work on the tried and true Aegis Saber, and you can see here that process beginning with the cutting in of panels for the various ship components. Now we'll be following along with the further interior and exterior developments throughout the quarter. For the Hercules Starlifter, the EU vehicle content team recently added a slew of inventory storage compartments to the area above the main cargo hold. Now these will be important access points for the upcoming local inventory system we recently discussed with Rich Tyrer on Calling All Devs. Check that out if you haven't already. They've also begun work on the cluster bomb mechanisms for the A2 variant, and all I'm going to say at this point is, don't ever find yourself underneath an A2. It's not going to go well for you. And finally, before we let you go this week, the same content team has been pushing forward on the Redeemer, further developing the exterior look and feel of this unique offering from Aegis. Now, focus during this sprint was on the thrusters and the glows to ensure they were nice and prominent with a stronger visual profile than what we've had before. There's been some struggle getting the turrets to feel just right with the overall shape and silhouette in recent months, so we expect more tinkering there in the coming weeks. Also to get more tinkering is the belly of the ship, which had not gone through final art at the time these images were captured. We're aiming for a, for a less boxy underside than you can see here. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that our partners at Turbulent, in addition to Star Citizen's web, platform, and services work, have now branched out into game development with the creation of a new studio focused on persistent universe locations. That their road ahead towards creating new star systems begins with helping to flesh out our beloved Stanton. And that ships like the Saber, the Hercules, and the Legendary Redeemer are now closer than ever before to realizing their full promise and impact on the verse. Now, keep an eye out for the release of Alpha 13 to our live servers today, if it hasn't happened already by the time you watch this. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Okay, let's jump into this. Uh, let me stop at the, start at the bottom this time. Um, Uriah. Was there anything that they showed us here um, with the sprint report that stuck out to you? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm ready now. I have to make some notes. Okay. <laughs> just just give me one item because we've got to cover everybody. So give me one that the one that stuck out to you the most. Um PC Homes. Mm. I really like how they're coming along. Mm -hmm. Um I'll just worry that like Will they all look like that for every planet that they're on? Like mm -hmm. the outpost that we have now, how it was just copy and paste on everything? Or mm -hmm. will they really be room mod have room modularity to like, will they be diverse? Yeah. Depending on what planet that they are. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. to, to yeah. answer, to, it's a good question. And I think to answer your question, this was several shows back last year. They did a thing where they showed us all of the designs that they were doing for homesteads. 
like they showed us various like let's say solar panels various uh engines and then they also did the same thing with furniture they showed us everything from multiple different styles of lamps to tables to chairs the whole nine yards and so they, it gave us that impression that there will be differences in location but this isn't just for npc this is also talking about what we will be able to do later on too so i think modularity is almost a, i hate to say this i think it's a have to because people like me and probably you want to decorate our place the way we want it to be you know okay yeah okay. uh I, and, and so there may be some places like homesteads like maybe let's say it's an npc town maybe that those things are kind of structured a certain way and they're fixed but i think that they're also going to give you flexibility to design your place the way you want it to be when you build your homestead hmm. yeah like you have a point but mm -hmm. what i mean more so is like not the decoration stuff but just the building structure the looks like yeah i remember in the be in the beginning you said it was just a concept idea mm -hmm. but ever since then there hasn't been any other concept ideas of what the building structures will look like. Like right now, they're still very Star Wars inspired. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I get you, I get you. Yeah, absolutely. I, and again, but that was remember that was concept art we saw earlier where they had the variations. They showed us one where everything was kind of circular, like that kind of Tatooine-ish look. Then they had another set mm. that were kind of box-like. Then they had these oh. other ones that looked like fortresses. But I, I guarantee you, they've given us the impression that like, let's, let's use something, a different item. They've talked about how they want even with clothing that that be reflected in wherever we're at. So in other words, the clothing from New Babbage will look different from the clothing from Hurston. And they even said in systems, it will be the same way. So if I see you in this really cool jacket, you may tell me, yeah, Griff, I picked this up in Terra. I can't go to Stanton. You know, I mean, I can't go someplace in Stanton to get it. I physically have, because that's how the people in Terra dress. So I would also mm -hmm. think that the architecture, just like we've seen in the game so far, like our corp looks distinct, you know, very different from New Babbage and so on and so forth. I would just think that that theme would be carrying, but I think it's a good question because I think the players would want exactly what you're saying to see those type of visual triggers, you know what I mean? That are different wherever yeah. you go. I think that's a real good question. Real good question. And they they, they did mention yeah. that when they when they first uh, started talking about the halves, like they, they wanted to make sure that the uh, the halves that are built on the planets or moons look like they were created from materials from, from like there, local, yeah. locally sourced. So they won't all look like they were, you know, snap, you know, copy and paste it. So mm -hmm. I do think that, you know, that's there. But as far as them just showing, you know, hey, we're, we're putting plants and, you know, mom's picture on the wall, they're just using the same. <laughs> um the same same models yeah good point mm -hmm. okay that's good you're right if you had a yeah. um if you had a bmm that had earth wares on it mm -hmm. and you were traveling the systems yeah. and saying hey yeah that'd be pretty be very cool decent uh gig yeah and you could also charge whoever you want to because you're saving somebody else yeah. from <laughs> traveling <laughs> all that distance yeah. right no that's a good point pops what stuck out to you on that video anything uh the world of plants uh mm -hmm. get me and I'll, I'll tell you why because it's uh connected to me to exploration okay, okay. i'm looking forward to like, it's this universe mm -hmm. really get out there as far as we all go and um i just wish that they um hopefully soon that they'll maybe do some volcano oh, okay you know yeah. that you know there is a volcanic planet in pyro right oh okay there is a um, there is a mustafar kind of lava planet in the in pyro okay. yes okay very cool uh let's see let me go to uh fist to face fist to face uh the flowers are you there to pick flowers to put them in your vase in your hab or are you trying to do some medical stuff and sell them what do you want to do i'm all about that money <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm all about that money. Okay. But I got two things about the video though. Okay. For me, one is will I have to vacuum and clean that Persian rug? <laughs> okay. Because the degradation one. is in the game. Okay. <laughs> That's you the know first what I'm one. saying? Okay. Because you know, you're tracking dirt through your home and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I'm just saying, I don't know how far they'll go with that. <laughs> but number two was was a good thing was that they talked about which is very minor, but uh -huh. it was very big. Mm -hmm. Is seeing the ship's yeah. um, exhaust, that contrails, mm -hmm. that exhaust that engine mm -hmm. is very key to when you're talking about combat yeah. and tracking somebody. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and then they talked about how the way that will work within gas clouds, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to run, you know, and trying to hide yourself or something like that. Yep. And, so, then, and I didn't even notice that it wasn't in the VFX. They said it, it got knocked out when they did the upgrade to the VFX in the clouds, because right. I hadn't even noticed that you didn't see that anymore for some reason, you know, but, that, right. but it's a bug. Right. So they're going to they're going to get it to yeah. come back. Yeah, they'll get it to come back. But you're right. That is important to anybody who's doing. Con I remember when Contrails first came up, people were barking about it. Oh, no, we don't want to see all that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and now that we have them, people are like, oh, my God, you know, we do need that for tracking. It, it's it's too, too, too difficult otherwise. So that's a real good yeah. point. Admiral, what about you? What stuck out to you in there? Uh, well, what, first, real quick, with the, the Contrails, mm -hmm. they were like all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, different. Uh, Air, air pressures and stuff like that they should not be there all the time mm -hmm. but okay so i'm gonna say the same thing he just said uh the the engine effects mm -hmm. especially in space mm -hmm. like to see all that stuff moving around it's just like oh my god it's like straight out of star wars or something like that it's <laughs> so cool mm -hmm. um and then really quick uh the the interiors of those uh habs just mm -hmm. uh you know, they make me think about why my room is so damn dirty right now, and <laughs> how, how, do I, how do I get it look like that? <laughs> okay, go, Matt. What about you? What stuck out? Um, the plant stuck out to me, um, but maybe for a different reason for everybody else. You know, I gotta be, I gotta be weird. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think so. They was they were saying that hey, these plants could be used to make you know heat resistant textiles, mm -hmm. right? So in my mind, I'm like, are, are, are we going to have, you know, armor making or crafting or tailoring as a potential, um, you know, career path in the game? Are you going to be able to go and gather this stuff and, and make certain things? Is there, are, are we going to, you know, is crafting going to be introduced at some point in time? That's not something that I've heard a lot of talk about outside mm -hmm. of the pioneer crafting halves and maybe, you know, uh, the endeavor or whatever create, you know, doing farming, but I haven't heard too much about crafting outside of like the medical gameplay and stuff. I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned that because that was kind of, to me, um, an Easter egg because they talked about it being for textiles or for clothing or for armor. And people have already kind of alluded to whether or not there'll be things that you can do to strengthen your armor. Like, you know, somebody may be able to mm -hmm. do something to upgrade it. Mm -hmm. So when you've got ships like the Endeavor, that maybe when you do find yeah. those plants and stuff, there's some type of work mm -hmm. that can be done scientifically in the research that allows you to improve. Or, as you mentioned, actually do a trade of creating things. I mean, we can kind of see those of us who play Star Wars Galaxies, I always go back to that game. That was definitely in the game. And there were people who spent nothing but their time making clothing and armor for people. And all, and they were rich, they were filthy rich because you always needed mm -hmm. to have new armor. Um, so yeah. I, 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 that's a real good point, Gomab. I would really be curious to see whether or not they go down Can, that path with that. Because mm -hmm. I know we talked to J2 about that as well. I had a conversation with him on it and we were a little bit different. It wasn't on the plants, but it was more on the space whales. Yeah. Where when you're mm -hmm. mining off of the space whale, if you take a scale or something like that, you know, and you're able to use that towards your armor or, mm -hmm. or craft an armor basically made out of that space whale. You know uh, what? Material. I hope space whales are like freaking jaws and they get all of y'all to come after them. I swear I do. I hope they chomp y'all up and y'all got to work for them scales off of the space whale. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Yes, I'm a tree hugger and y'all gonna be killing them whales. I can't believe it. Where about them crabs? Go kill them crabs. Some whales minding their business. <laughs> so, you got, so, 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 so you're Greenpeace. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm Greenpeace. Like that. yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm flat around being Greenpeace. Green yeah, most of thank you for the 50 bits thank you thank you so much i'm not captain ahab thank you ops chief uh okay so <laughs> all right uh intent uh anything stick out to you in there what you saw yeah um no everything everyone else said uh particularly interested in the um the uh, component parts mm -hmm. uh being access accessible um for when you can actually when i guess they become physicalized and you can actually mm -hmm. move the parts into your ship mm -hmm. um so glad to see work happening on the save the it was saber, saber? yeah because they got it on the they yeah. got it on the uh, gladius now they just put that out on yeah. the last patch announced the saber yeah 
Yeah. So the, you know the the thing that I'm, that's right. The the thing that I was uh, like about that is that they are the the design for the Gladius is one way, and then you do the saber, and then you start kind of iterating across some of the test icon ships, mm -hmm. and I think you come up with pretty good solutions for it, and that kind of paves the way for you when you do it to the other ships. Yeah. Yeah. J two said Yeti teeth to make the armor piercing bullets. Yeah. By the way, did you guys happen to see when they gave out the tracker for this week that they're putting that freaking Yeti in now in the game for creatures? Mm -hmm. That that's that's going to oh. be in there now on New Babbage. So yeah, all right. So all of you Apple loving people, y'all better make sure y'all ready for the big Yeti to be <laughs> down there when you go there. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say to that. It ain't gonna be yeah. on our corp. It ain't gonna be on our corp. I can tell you that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have the Yeti running around the commons. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they get loose, get loose in the building. That would be so funny. Oh my god! Oh, my Wookie armor. The Wookie, yeah, Wookie armor. I told you I wanted to make him my pet, so oh, that's fine by me. God, oh my goodness! Good luck with that. Oh, yeah, for you real. give me a tranquilizer gun, and I will try. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, the thing that it stood out to me, guys, and I'm sure all you guys saw it, was when they talked about the C2 and the uh, M2, the Crusader ships. They showed Ooh. that storage compartment area oh, yeah. in the upper level. Now they and they referenced it in relation to the inventory, and I what I think, and this is my maybe it's conjecture. What they're saying is, is that the limited or physicalized inventory is about to start getting put in, which talks about which means. And we keep translating for those of you who don't get what we're talking about. The parts you need and the components you need, you're not going to be carrying them on you. They're going to be in those containers. That's where you're going to get stuff when you have to repair your ship. Because there's only so much stuff you're going to be able to carry once your inventory gets limited. Some of that will be your food, some other items that you carry, but you're not going to be carrying a size four warp drive in your pocket. Where you are going to put it <laughs> is in places like that. And when there's damage to the ship, when you're in when you're in quantum and it's time to do a repair, where you've got to change out a cooler or whatever it is, or you know, you're whatever. Those locations are going to be places where you store things like that. And I, and I keep mm. saying this because people keep we're so used to having the magic bag of holding right now. But it's coming mm -hmm. where not only capacity but weight are going to be a factor with what you can carry. So all of those component, those places on your yeah. ships, the lockers, the drawers in your habs, all that stuff. Now that's why they said personalized habs are coming up. You're going to have to start storing things. You're going to have to have multiple suits. You can't have one. You know, all your suits carried on you. You may have your cold suit on this particular moon and planet, and you're not going to take that cold suit with you when you go to a hot planet. That you, or your ship may only have certain suits on it or certain weapons. So all of this stuff is stuff that we got to be thinking about and you're constantly going to be spending money and buying stuff. So you're constantly going to have to work <laughs> to be able to equip all of these different locations that you own, whether they're ships or whether they're habs, whatever they may be, your apartment, whatever. So that's- I just want to be able to run on your 890 and pull out your power supply listen, and jump out the airlock. Listen, don't oh, even start. Oh, you got to get past security first. There you go. T tell, them tell them 10th, tell them 10th. Come on. <laughs> uh, that's a big thing. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> if you've got a whole it's like you got three spares for everything on your ship uh -huh. and then your ship gets blown up or it gets stolen yeah. i mean you're yeah. out of some cash yep yeah yes yeah. that's a real good point and, it, and that's no joke there's gonna be some real weeping and gnashing of teeth that's what i'll tell you if that happens so <laughs> folks are not gonna be happy they're not gonna be happy no which is which, but, but, it, but it but it brings balance to the game too <laughs> seriously it brings balance to the game i mean mm -hmm. how how much do you want to risk your ship if you go somewhere, you know, if you don't have security, like Tenth just said, are you willing to take that chance that someone actually hacks into your ship and takes off or takes something off of it that's important? Maybe they don't maybe they don't take your ship, but they sure go in and take your quantum drive. Now you're sitting there and can't go yeah. anywhere. There's a whole lot of things that could happen in the game under those circumstances. So yeah. That's a ship on bricks. Yeah. It'll be PvP on bricks. It'll be a different world when my stuff comes in. <laughs> ship on bricks. Okay. All right. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead and jump out of this. And, and, and we are right at 1226. I want to show you guys this machine. But I've been so excited about this machine. I stumbled on this one. It it's got some weird humor in it, but hopefully you'll find it as humorous as I did. The name of it is Craven. Episode one. A case for the Mondays. A case for the Mondays, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy it. I love Mondays. Fresh brewed bean water. A whole week of work ahead. It's going to be a great oh. day.
I'm gonna have a wonderful day, a beautiful day. Get a bird just shit on my head. I need to live closer to the spaceport. This walk's ridiculous and there's no birds there. Sorry fellas, no autographs today. I thought they fixed these magnetic walls. Get me off. Seriously? Just because you can eat six torpedo burritos doesn't mean you should. Ah, <laughs> uh, fresh Lorville air. <coughs> my doctor thinks these scanners are what caused my genitals to shrink. I'm getting close. Only three more kilometers to go until I reach the ship. Disgusting. My god, I hope they unclogged the toilet on the prospector. I'm about to have an emergency evacuation drill. Out of the way, code brown, code brown. Oh my god, hurry up! I gotta fill up the peanut butter jar! Now I'm late. Let's get the ship off the ground here and into space. Lorville Tower, this is the UEE L Bundy requesting permission to fucking roll! That's affirmative L Bundy. You sure to follow this line out? Let's see where I gotta go today. Ah, oh, Ariel, this is awesome! I love it there. Blinding yellow skies, the smells of sulfur and methane in the atmosphere. It's so relaxing. How long does it take to get into space? Get off this rock. Now we're cooking with quantanium. Another major torque imbalance? It just had that fixed. What the frick? Score there. That's a lowercase O7 day, and I didn't even have to blast any pirates with the size 2 carrots. Boss is gonna be so happy when he finds out I have a truckload of Bexalite. Probably give me a raise, maybe even a promotion. I'll be able to finally move out of the L-19. Away from those birds. Attention Houston, the Bundy has landed. Not even a speaker in here. How is that possible? Did you think you were gonna hear the bossa nova again? Bet nobody thought the future would be full of elevators. I wonder why they put the 900 degree cauldrons right next to the walkway. We got a pretty good selection. Alright, I'll be back for that tomorrow. Hey Kenny, boss is gonna be super happy with me today, that's for sure. Where's he at? 
Oh, hey, Craven. Uh, I don't know where the boss is. He uh, took off after he said tomorrow's going to be the last day for the, the prospect. Once you run your load, you're going to have to come in and turn in your key. What? You're kidding. You just brought him a truckload of Bexalite. That's more money than a three moles will make in the same day. You can't be grounding the prospectors. He says something about, uh, s selling the fleet and, um, having nothing but moles running now. But I don't have a mole license, and it takes three years to get one. You see anything you like? Well, that's a real shame, Craven. Take care of yourself. I gotta go talk to the boss, man. This can't be happening. I gave the guy 72 years of my life. Hey, back again, I see. Welcome. He's not here. It's strange. Always. Okay, okay, Craven. Uh, <laughs> let me ask uh, Admiral Kusanaki. I'll start with you. What did you think of uh, this particular machinima? <laughs> As I said in chat, I had to mute my mic because uh, I was just laughing too much. <laughs> and uh, whenever you want to play the uh, the next one, let just go ahead. <laughs> okay, great, great. Fist, what do you think? Oh man, <clears throat> excuse me, I got two things on this one. One is cold brown. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I understand why the Van Du hate us humans because he found out about the real world. <laughs> and, and, and them crummy bosses selling your shit before you can get to the Argo Mole. <laughs> that's why they hate us so much. <laughs> I don't know the law. I'm just that's 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 my opinion. I'm okay. Okay. Pops, what about you? What you think? Uh, I can relate to the gas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay. All right. You right? <laughs> Did you like it? Oh, I think we lost Uri. His mic is muted. I'll come back to him if he lights up yeah. again. Uh, oh, there he is. Uri? <laughs> Sorry, I thought I'd turn my mic back on. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't. Um, what did I just say? I liked it. It was really well done. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Like, like, some, it'd be a little better if well, on time and lengthwise if some of the traveling mm -hmm. scenes weren't at the ends. Mm -hmm. Well, just a, for a little short of time, but... It, it was really well done. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. it. Good. Okay. Cool. Go map. Hey, I appreciate him waking up with a you know, with a positive attitude. You know, he, <laughs> he, he, he was ready. To, he, at least he started his day out. You know, hey, I'm I'm about to go go out and get it. You know, I was like, man, is this me? You know, I gotta have my cup of coffee, and then you know, hey, then the sirens may go out. And so like, yeah, folks, yeah, get out the way, get out the way. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I, I, I identified with this vandal. I, I opened, I cracked up on the very first line when he talked about bean water. That right there had me laugh right off the bat when he started with that. Uh, tenth, what about you? What did you think of it? That was that was this was good. I I really liked it, and I think that the the kind of um, like uh, the articulation of like his thoughts and like I thought as he went through the day was good, but then at the end he kind of. You got a story that put, got put together, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. That was funny. It was a nice introduction to the character. Uh, I also like the fact that they turned humor into those things that are frustrating for us, like the whole three mile walk to get to your ship. You know, just joking yeah. about stuff that we all kind of think about when we're playing the game. Uh, but he had his little humorous moments. He joked around about how long it took to get out of atmosphere. You know, uh, <laughs> you know. I thought that he just some good humorous points in it, and of course the the Van Duel mask helped a lot. I think so. Uh, Chad, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, it was again one I'm, of those machinimas I stumbled across. Yeah, Admiral. I'm shocked. I'm looking at this right now because mm -hmm. I'm trying to look for the second episode, mm -hmm. and there's only 166 views. I know, like, I know. I was what? totally caught off guard. That's why I said I stumbled on this one because when I, you know, it, it didn't have a lot of views to it, and it's been out for a little while. And I was just kind of surprised when I saw. It. I was like, hmm, I never four heard comments. About this. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I thought it was a great take 
uh, and done very well as a short little piece. And like you said, I'm looking forward to the continuing chapters of it. And we'll keep an eye open for it as well. Cause I thought it was, I thought it was some pretty good stuff. I thought it was some pretty good stuff. I, I, I need to pick up a blue uh, paint job now for the prospect. So I'm like, <laughs> I actually like that. So funny. I didn't think I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, uh, let's see. Tenth, would you do me a favor and do the plugs for social media and the show this Sunday that's up there? And I'm going to start looking that's for somebody it. that we have to raid tonight. So we got, uh, if you guys want to join us, we do this every Friday night. Uh, Friday Night Live, it's our uh, interactive chat uh, talk show. Uh, so join us next week uh, for this particular show. But if you're still looking for some more Soul Citizen action we're back this sunday uh, the 25th we'll be talking about the ultimate citizen con um who's on that show griff this week this that this one is gonna be dig that song fast car song green eye gal is on and me it's, this week yeah, yeah and this is gonna be an interesting show um since because what we're doing is we're doing a deconstruction of citizen con um and then we're okay. rebuilding it the way we think we want to see citizen con ultimately be because we know each ah, year it's been kind of okay. changing and they've been adding things and taking some things away. So, and a lot of us have had not just experience with CitizenCon, but we've gone to other either gaming conventions or fantasy conventions or cosplay. And we want to kind of say, you know, if CitizenCon could be what we really want, what would it look like? So we're going to kind of, and we're going to take, you know, suggestions from the chat too. So we want to like kind of yeah. say, you know, what would like once the game is really out and they're fully, fully going, what would we really like to see? What do you want to see? A one day That's convention, cool. a three day convention, two day convention, so on and so forth. So w if you guys can make it this Sunday, we are really, really excited and hope you guys will be there to help us out with that. Um, I do want to say thank you to all of our guests that were here tonight. Uh, Admiral Kusanagi, Fist to Face, Go Map, Pops in Space, Uri, thank you for your first time coming in and sitting with us. We appreciate you, you, you coming you. in as well. And, uh, and I know you've been here before, it. so we're, we're happy to have you kind of sit in and, and hear your voice, which is awesome, and, and the things that you had to share. Um, let's see, tonight, let's see who we can support tonight. Let's find a new person that we haven't used before. I'm gonna go to Astronautical. Never seen Astronautical before. Uh, so you guys give a shout to Astronautical when you get there. Um, don't know if she's new to the game or what, but I definitely like to support the ladies that are out there because we need to see more women in our community, especially mm -hmm. in the streaming. So give a shout okay. there. Uh, don't forget this Sunday, again, the Ultimate Citizen Content. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, brother. Um, oh, man. All Thank the way from the West Coast. He's, 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 it. It's still early for him. The rest of us are pushing hours. You yeah. East Coasters, I know y'all pushing the hours <laughs> too. But um, I appreciate you making the time for, and hanging out with me tonight. And it hopefully we'll see you guys on Sunday. Uh, again, give a shout out to uh, Astronautical. Say hi from the Soul Citizens. And as always, peace, love, and soul. We appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you guys soon. Take care.